Chapter 3. Pitch is no longer at bat. For now. Pitch despised his imprisonment. It had been more than a hundred years since the Nightmare King had been jailed after the Battle of Bright Night. But his influence had not stopped. His armies had been soundly defeated, but they had not been obliterated. While Pitch did not know how many of his soldiers had escaped, this much was certain. The earth has many places where shadows and gloom can give safety, case can, can give safe refuge to wickedness. His daughter, Emily Jane, had betrayed him. And during those many years since Bright Night, she had fully evolved into her great calling to be Mother Nature. While she had stayed neutral throughout the early Nightmare Wars, she now used her formidable powers to keep her father confined. No jailer in history understood their prisoners' strengths, weaknesses, or abilities better than Emily Jane Pitchner. She was the only child of Lord Pitchner, the Golden Age hero who had become the scourge of a thousand galaxies, known as Pitch Black, the Nightmare King. And she knew what a valiant and doting father he once was. She knew the tenderness that had once emanated from him, and she knew that in one hand, he still held the remains of her childhood portrait in a miniature cameo. Emily Jane clung to the small, desperate hope that he would someday be restored to his former gallant self. For generations, her father's nightmare soldiers had huddled in ragtag groups without their leader, but in time they set about on nightmare missions that were becoming increasingly more organized and effective. The world seemed to be unraveling, and there was fear in the air. The nightmare soldiers fed off fear. This made them more daring and powerful. Fear is always a tonic to the wicked. It is dark and stealthy and could travel like no other feeling. Even in isolation, Pitch could feel this fear. Pitch's prison was unlike any that had ever been, and it was in a most unlikely of places, underneath the village of Santoff Plazen. So much of the Guardian's history originated from this enchanted settlement, and though it had been a place of refuge for magical thinking and innovation, it was by accidental design the perfect place to contain evil. It had been Omric Shalazar, when he was a young wizard, who had discovered a strange parched meteor crater at the edge of the European wildlands. The crater's surface was coated with the densest metallic ore he had ever seen, and being the last living citizen of Atlantis, he had seen many things no other being since had laid eyes upon. In the center of this crater grew a teeny sapling. Tempered by the fires of the cosmos, this tree would soon grow into the towering heart of the village Omric founded, Santoff Clausen. Its branches, trunk, and root would transform in density and shape at Ulrich's command. Chairs, doors, entire rooms could take shape inside its massive trunk. Ulrich called the tree Big Root, and from within this living treehouse, Ulrich studied until he was the last of the all-powerful wizards. In time, he brought to his town of Santa Claus and other like-minded men, women, and creatures, and finally the guardians themselves. First North and Catherine, who became his pupils, then Bunnemon, who had knowledge beyond even Ulrich's, and Queen Tuthiana, and lastly, Sanderson Mansnuzi. The creature called Nightlight had been in their company from the very beginning. He was the only one who understood Pitch's one weakness, that his villainous heart still had a glimmer of humanity. But this knowledge put Nightlight in constant peril. Pitch hated this weakness, but even more, he hated that Nightlight used it again and again to defeat him. Being encased in a dungeon beneath the birth city of his enemies was for Pitch a humiliation too loathsome to bear and Big Root lived up to its name admirably. When Pitch was buried beneath the earth of the tree, its deep, sprawling roots braided into an elaborate, inescapable series of buttresses and walls that fused with the metallic rock left by the meteor. This rock had given, had given the tree its otherworldly power. In the passing centuries, Omrick had learned that the meteor was made of what is called dark matter, the only element in the universe that Pitch could not break, breach or break. And so Pitch lay there in complete isolation, weakened, silent, weary but waiting. Nightlight, Jack Frost, whatever name the boy had, Pitch would soon get his revenge upon him. He had set his plan in motion. It was a plan he had nurtured for decades, and now it was ready to be let loose.